My mother is moving today, out of the big house she's lived in for half her life and into an apartment where she will live for the rest of it. My sister Kate says not to say it that way, that it sounds like a death sentence. My mother is moving today. She's giving away all the crucifixes that protected each room. She'll only need three now. One for the bedroom, one for the kitchen, and one for the room where she'll do her crossword puzzles, eat vanilla ice cream, and wait for the phone to ring. My mother is moving today, from a quiet suburban neighborhood where she doesn't know anyone anymore, where lilac bushes and early spring crocuses are hidden by huge SUVs, where dogs are heard but not seen, where kids are inside staring at a screen on a sunny day. My mother is moving today, from a place that still has a garbage pail on the ground and a graveyard of charcoal grills in the backyard, where the scratchy webbing hangs from the rusty lawn chairs, a cord of rotten wood sinks deep into the soil to eventually become one with the earth. My mother is moving today to an apartment with a breakfast nook and a back porch. There are white plastic chairs lining the adjoining decks where other ladies will sit out their days. The Red Sox will be on the radio and they'll talk about how they never liked baseball until their husbands died. They like the familiar voice of the man who calls the games and the crowd and the smack of the ball when the batter hits it out of the park. My mother is moving today. My sister Barb has hung all the family photos on the wall and hung the same curtains on the windows. Two of the best living room chairs were reupholstered, but the smell of lemon pledge and my dad's unfiltered cigarettes still linger in the wood frames. The faux oriental rug from that same living room has been cleaned, stained from decades of new puppies and dinner parties. Dinner parties where my relatives leaned on the walnut spinet in our kitchen and sang songs like My Wild Irish Rose after a few highballs. My mom is moving today. She'll have her mail forwarded from 34 Buttonwood Lane, where every weekend it seemed like she cooked for 30. Her arm muscles overly developed from hand mix and cakes and cookie batter and mounds of potato salad. From 34 Buttonwood Lane, where she took in my brother's best friend when he came back scarred from Vietnam. From 34 Buttonwood Lane, where she waited up by the glow of the TV to catch us sneaking in from a night of backseat romance. From 34 Buttonwood Lane, where she watched my dad pass away with dignity in the house that he built. And from 34 Buttonwood Lane, where she'll leave a house key attached to a Celtic cross and pick up a key that says East Main Street, number one. And she is. The bloom from my 